HCL, we are back. It is playoffs day one, game day 19. For those counting at home, we are super pumped to get this underway. I'm Alafresco. To my left, Ghosty Ferret. To my right, Ohio Otters and ZDXW. We are super pumped to give you uh, some of the greatest uh, playoff action today, starting with two games, two matchups. It should be exciting. Uh, ZD, do you want to jump into things on what two matchups are happening tonight and specify what is going on with the series? Uh, round one, game one is going to be between the Sacramento Surge visiting the Ohio Otters. That game's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the second round one matchup, game one is between the Los Angeles Earthquakes visiting the Paris Pigeons. That game is supposed to start at 745 EST, but that could be pushed back if the Surge Otters game goes to overtime, double OT, triple OT, whatever OT. So that is a tentative start time, but it'll be 7.45 p.m. or later. And game two for these series are going to be Friday, March 20th, at the same respective time, 7 and 7.45 p.m. EST. 22nd, my bad. 22nd, my bad. And then on Saturday, March 23rd, would be the potential would be the potential game three matchups if needed. These are only three game series, so uh, if it's tied one one after two games, they will meet on Saturday, the 23rd, at the same respective times. And excuse the typo, it says Sunday, March 23rd. It's supposed to be Saturday, March 23rd. But you catch the drift. Back to you, Al. All right. Thank you, uh, ZD. Uh, Should be an exciting uh, round of uh, matchups. Um, Starting with the very first game between the Sacramento Surge and the Ohio Otters. Obviously, I am a team member of the Sacramento Surge. Uh, We have some very good uh, players. We have Radium and Gorius most likely on the first line and r and and Gasolines on the second line uh, with star goaltender Vasilevsky in between the cages. Uh, should be an interesting lineup for the Surge and exciting. Ohio Otters, do you want to go over what your team's lineup look like? looks like? Yeah, sure thing, Al. I'm excited. Uh, we got Robe and Sammy the Whale coming at you on the first line. Big threat on offense. They've been scoring most of our goals this season, but Packers and APAT on the second line is not a bad option as well. You know, they've outperformed some teams. Uh, but our true superstar is Bagel Glazed, the brick wall and net. He's saved some of our games this season, and it should be a fun watch. Yeah, should be an interesting game one matchup, but I did say that Vasilevsky will be in between the pipes for the surge. That's not necessarily true. Ghosty Ferret. You got an injury report for us. Yeah, I do. So as we come over here, we have the injury report tonight. And only one injury, but unfortunately, it is arguably the biggest star in the series, what many consider to be the greatest of all time and then behind the net, or in the net, uh, Vasileski here choking it in. Um, he is just... The only reason that the Surge really won games this season, in my opinion, is this guy right here. And him being out, just... I don't want to say it, you know, leaves... Uh, the surge with zero chance to win, but it really hurts their odds. Unfortunately, he has a groin injury and he will be out for game one. Um, we're questionable. He's questionable for game two, but we're going to move here as Luke has an interview with Chokington bedside in the hospital. All right. And we are joined with Chokington of the Sacramento surge in his hospital room. Chokington, how are you feeling right now? You know, Luke, I felt better. I'm starting to feel a little bit better, but uh, obviously could be better. Well, tell me exactly what happened. I've been told that it's a groin injury. Is that true? That is correct. We were at a practice earlier today, and, you know, I was playing a little, t- a little too rough at practice, and uh, went post-post a little too hard and uh, pulled my groin. All right, well, obviously playoffs a really bad time for that to happen, but thankfully you just traded for Al Fresco from the Malibu Marshmallows, who has been known to play a net before. Tell me, are you confident in your potential backup goalie for tonight? Well, it, maybe. I'm going to be hopeful and say yes, but, um, you know, I've, I've been around long enough to see the bright and the, uh, the bad of Alfresco, so I'm hoping for the good of Alfresco tonight. 
All right, well, that's all the time we have now. Choke, hope you recover soon, but until then, have a good one. All right, thank you for that interview, Luke. Fantastic job on the media side of things to find your way into the hospital. Uh, great uh, media work there, but let's jump into who is starting for the surge now because Vasilevsky won't be in between the pipes, and it, it's going to be me. I am going to be hopping in between the pipes for the Sacramento surge. Uh, I feel I'm pretty confident in my abilities. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't, I don't think you get it, man. You're washed. Um, I'm sorry to report. Robe is dropping. He's stat padding against you, man. So. Uh, okay, okay. I think that's a bit too far. I'm still a BHCL cal no, backup dude, caliber I, goalie. You, you weren't even. You were traded. The Malibu Marshmallows did not think to start you once. They don't value you, and neither do the Surge. You're. This is forced. I don't okay. know how they're even letting you start. Okay, now. okay, the money. Let's 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 back off a little bit here. Uh, you're not even on the roster for the Otters. Dude, I am so bad. I made at the center. roster. I made the roster. Al. Are you playing? Are you playing? I don't see you on the roster. You aren't a I'm player. I'm retired, Al. I'm retired. Yeah. No, you aren't. You're a goalie. You suck. You're terrible. At least I have to step in. Uh, as you can see, we had to play musical chairs because Al Fresco and Ohio Otters uh, were foaming at the mouth, get each other, uh, biting, scratching, hair pulling. It was a good old fashioned cat fight. And we will go into our pickums. Okay. And we are going to start with Ohio Otters. Who do you think is going to win this game? And what's your series prediction? You know, it's going to be. A really close game if the Surge had any semblance of talent on their roster, especially in net. So uh, I I don't think they're winning this one. I don't think there's any chance. I think the Otters are blowing them out. They're going to mercy rule them. It's going to be at least 8 to nothing. And um, they're, they're sweeping this series. There's no hope after demolishing Al Fresco in net game one. They're hey, not going to be able to do that. Do you want me to come over there? Do you want me to come over there? Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down here. Sit down here. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Like I, like I said. All right. Okay, you're done. Us. You're done. No, I. Go into timeout. Me. Go into timeout now. Yeah, you. Okay. Hey. All righty. Sorry that got escalated. Hey, I, I do agree with Demoni. Surge are cooked this game. Demoni, you can come back. A good noodle for all right. Two seconds. Thank you. Thank you. The Surge are going to be cooked. Alfresco's in net. It's free goals. Oh, I think goodness, the Surge are going to win, or not the Surge. The Ohio Otters are going to win game one, five to nothing, and this is going to be a clean sweep for Ohio two game series. Ferret, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think you guys are making this seem like it's going to be more of a blowout than it is. I have a little bit of faith in Gorius and. Even Alfresco, I wouldn't oh say I have as God. much faith as him in his glorious, but he's capable, I guess. So I'm going to give a 2-0 win for the Otters. I know I just said they're capable, but uh, they're not capable of winning, unfortunately. And the Otters will sweep this series. What do you think, Al? This is just blasphemy. The bias on the desk is crazy. All three of you are so biased towards the Otters. Of course, I'm going to pick my Sacramento Surge to win this game. Uh, one nothing. Uh, of course, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be dominant. Gorius is going to look fantastic. The Surge are winning this one, one to nothing. Uh, Luke, behind the camera, we have a pick from you as well. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think the bias here is is quite frankly disgusting, and uh, people are not going giving you the credit that you deserve. Um, I think that Al Fresco for the Surge, you are going to play amazing if you were playing for the Ohio Otters because the Ohio Otters are going to be dropping goals on you oh left and right. God. It is not Dude. even going to be close. The Otters and Robe are finally going to beat the fraud allegations. And I'm, I'm going with a 5-1 game. I think it's just going to be open season uh, against Al Fresco. Disastrous. Uh, we have one more pick, though, actually, from our director behind the scenes. Disc of McGundy, what do you think is going to be the score of today's game? Al Fresco is a walking bean. 5-1 Ohio Otters. This is just blasphemy, man. Why is it always me? Why are we talking on hey. me? Um, I you're just an easy target. target. You peaked in plumber to. era. If I speak, I may oh. get fired. But uh, 
Thanks for the pick, guys, and we will see everybody shortly for game one of round one between the Sacramento Surge at the Ohio Otters. Like I said, we'll see you all in a few. Alright, welcome to BHCL Playoffs Day 1. I am Damoni, your caster, joined by my color commentator and cameraman, Luke. How's it going? I'm excited to be here today. It should be an interesting matchup. Yeah, for our first game, we're witnessing the Ohio Otters, the third seed, take on the sixth seed, Sacramento Surge, who started the season hot at 5-5, five and five, but lost four straight to finish sixth. Below the LA Earthquakes who were not so hot. So it's been a downward spiral for the Surge here. Um, and the Otters, I believe, have won their last three straight. Luke, do you think there's any hope for the Surge team, first of all? Obviously, uh, with your opinions on the desk, uh, does not seem like it. But what's, what's the X factor for the Surge here? I think the X factor for the Surge is uh, the Ohio Otters getting in their own heads. I think that the only way that the Surge come out on top today is if the Otters just don't do good. Um, and, I mean, it's a possibility. We've, we've known their mindsets uh, when it comes to playoffs. Some of the top players on that team, Rove, Sammy the Whale, they, they, they have a little bit of an interesting approach to playoff hockey. Uh, and hopefully they can break that mindset, that mentality, and just play how they did all season. They did extremely well. Hopefully they don't turn it around this time. In net for the Surge is Al Fresco, which is a player who hasn't played in that guy. quite a long time. So I'll, I'll let you talk about Al Fresco and net for the surge. Yeah, I mean, he's just useless, you know? I mean, you take a guy who hasn't played goaltender in, what, three to four seasons? Feels like a, a full calendar year. And uh, he's just not fit to play at the highest level, especially not in playoffs where, you know, stuff's getting serious. You can't... It's really unfortunate for the Surge to have a bum like Alan Nett. You know, I, th I think he's going to do his best. I think he's going to try his darndest. Um, I don't think that that oh, he will. means much. However, it'll be remain to see what impact that can have. Uh, Chokington should be back in the lineup for Game 2, and I think that'll be a huge morale boost for the Surge as a whole. Um, you know, sometimes when, you, when you're playing down a player um, or you're having a sub, you kind of play a little bit better. You're so you're trying to make up for the fact that you're missing such a key piece that we actually might see Sacramento come out with a little bit of fire, but that could be extinguished fairly quickly if Ohio gets an early goal. Yeah, I mean, I I did. I am the team manager. I told my guys in the team chat it is of the utmost importance that we score first because that'll really set the tone of the game, and. It might crush the, the Surge's hopes. I don't know. They've been putting a lot of pressure on themselves to win this game. Uh, if I've checked BHL General Discord. Uh, just the Surge, really high hopes for some reason, but I'm sure if Ohio kills the momentum uh, quickly, they won't really have a chance of fighting back into this game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We're just a few seconds away from puck drop. Who do you think is going to be the X Factor for this game? Who do you think is going to take it home and win it? To take it home and win it? Oh, well, I mean... I, I just mean, like, who's going to who's gonna really show off? You think R.I. Kick Z is going to throw right. Ohio, Ohio Otters? Uh, he's not on the team. <laughs> but, 
I I think you know, Robe and Whale have been a great line all season. I'm not worried about them. Although they did play pretty poorly against the Blizzard. Uh, we prefer to forget that game. I think Packers and APAT are really going to be the X Factor for this Otters team. Because that is what led to their downfall in their last game against the Surge, which they, which they lost. Granted, Bagel was not in net. But they lost because Packers and uh, I believe the person was Quovu, who is not much of a downgrade by any means over APAT. They lost because of that second line diff, so we'll see if that takes effect today. Face off underway, Radium 7 winning it forward. Gory sends a quick shot in. Bagel Glazed able to turn that one aside into the neutral zone. Robe pressuring. Chases Gory is behind his own net. A very risky and aggressive play from Robe. We tend to see that for Robe in the playoffs. The narrative is that Robe gets a little too in his own head come playoff time. We'll see if that carries over to this series as Robe tries the near side. Doesn't work. Looking for more options. Gorius denying him on the boards. Gets it up. Sammy the Whale. Bringing it back safely. Crosses it for Robe. Radium 7 pressuring him. Robe getting it past him on the near boards. Gorius holds the neutral zone. Radium looking for room past Sammy the Whale. He won't get it. Sammy the Whale getting it up the boards. Gorius holds it at the red line. Radium 7 shoots one in. And Bagel Glazed able to make the easy glove. Sammy the Whale now. Defending against Radium 7. Up for Robe. Robe sprung past Gasolines. He catches, he catches up. Gasolines able to ping it into the corner. Robe, a quick turnaround shot. He scores. Robe with the first goal for the Otters. And they're up 1-0. First shot. First goal for Ohio here tonight. Ooh. Exactly how you want to enter the playoffs. Alfresco trying his best to stand in net, but like Damoni said on the desk, it might just be open season here for the Otters. Bro. Rough look, but a great play from Robe. What do you think, Damoni? I, uh, I can't say I respect Al, <laughs> but I don't disrespect him. And, uh, you know, unbiased, that was, that was not a good shot. And it should have been saved. I think Al was trying to read the play a little too much. I mean, see, but, that's that's you know, the kind of goal, though, that, that it sneaks by you. You know, you don't expect that shot yeah. to go off. Exactly. Here's Apat winning it forward quickly. Gets past Gasolines, but unable to get a shot away. He'll force it into the Surge corner. Both second lines on now. Arden B and Gasolines for the Surge. And as we discussed earlier, Packers and APAT for the Otters. Packers, a long P3. Saved by Al Fresco. The rebound is loose, but it's cleared by Gasolines. He'll bring it up the ice now. Packers holds the blue line. Has APAT in the center. Elects to go for the shot, and Arden B shuts him down. Packers, good pullback. Arden B reads it, though. Dangerous chance for Packers. And a good read by Arden. Arden up the boards for Gasolines. Gets it past APAT, but APAT not committing too much on that play. Good work from the second line defenseman. Gorius on for the surge. APAT working with him on the board, sends it back for his line mate Packers. Packers over for APAT. He'll drag it back to the boards. Good move there, but Gasolines clamping him up. Radium 7 pressuring Packers now. Gets it, trying to pass it out to the slot but it hits the post, and it's off the side of the net. It's up for Robe now. Packers, Mitz reads the play. Radium 7th shot right into Bagel Glazed. Excellent save there from the Ohio Otters goalie. Packers behind his own net with it. Working past Radium up for Robe. Sammy the Whale on the ice now. He'll send it up the near boards. Robe beats Goriest, but he's pinned to the boards still. Beats him again. Ala Fresco sliding in the way of that one, and that may have been an own goal. Or no, Sammy the Whale got a stick on it. It yeah, looked no. like Radium may have hit that. No, Sammy the Whale definitely tucked that one in here for Ohio. Uh, kind of feel bad for Alfresco there. That was just a scramble out in front. But, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. And that's kind of what Sammy the Whale's whole game plan is. He just gets down in the nitty-gritty just like that. Easy little open net there. Just power threes it, dumps it in. Uh, just a second ago before this, though, we saw a huge opportunity from Radium. A great save by Bagel Glaze to keep it a 1-0 game at the time. And now his team's up 2-0.
Sammy the Whale crashing the net there, proven to be the right play as he puts them up 2-0 against the Surge. We'll see if they can bounce back here. Surge obviously suffered a pretty bad defeat against the Malibu Marshmallows earlier in the season, but came back in a double header. So that goes to show the mental toughness of this team. We'll see if they can replicate that in the highest stage of playoffs. Here's Gorius on the blue line. Doesn't get a shot through. Sammy the Whale clearing that out to Robe. Gorius sends one in. Radium 7 lagging on that puck. He could have gotten a shot away, but Sammy the Whale getting to it. Taking advantage of the high ping. Robe now getting around Radium to the slot. Gorius is there to defend it. Robe out to the middle for Sammy the Whale. He whiffs. He'll regroup at center ice. Gives it up for Radium. Who will send it back for Gorius. Minute 30 left in this first period. We should see a line change soon as Gorius crit chains past the Otters defenders. And Bagel Glaze flies across for a great save. Here's Robe getting past Arden B. Bad line change for the surge. Robe's shot. Saved by Al Fresco. It's loose. Robe kicks it out to the Sammy the Whale. He'll elect to take it himself. Arden B up the ice now. Robe clears one in. He'll change for APAT. Sammy the Whale and APAT on the ice now. Whale defending against Gasolines. Behind his own net. Gasolines now. Tries to bury it. Unable to get the curve away, and it's back for Arden B. We'll see a change for the Otters here. It's Packers coming off the bench to swat that puck away from Gasolines. APAT 8 will chase it down the ice. Arden B with it. APAT 8 dragging it back. Looking for room. Gets past Arden B. Curve to the middle. APAT 8 is dancing through the zone, but he can't get the shot away. Arden B in the corner now. Defended by APAT. APAT really trying to free it for the corner. Three seconds, and they won't be able to get anything. As that'll conclude the first period, the Otters take this one 2-0 after one. Shots are 5-4 in favor of Ohio. But the surge, not looking as bad as we thought they'd be. Pass it off to Luke now. I'm sure he has something to say or yeah, something to show us. Going off of the uh, script we normally do, instead of going between the benches, we're actually going to talk about a little bit of drama between the two team owners, Foolish and Wally Bear. Um, recently, they all attended a Hurricanes game, an actual hockey game, and this is what Wally Bear had to say about Foolish's choice of attire. Yo, Tokington and, and UP, I'm just saying, like, I ain't speaking for the owner of the Otters, but, like, I didn't see no jersey at the at the... At the Chell game, like, I wasn't seeing no Otter jersey, like, I, I, I'm I'm fake fan, I'm, I'm saying the owner don't mess with him, they don't mess with them, are the Otters in them, mm -mm. we just don't mess with them, might be a bandwagon thing, he just, he, he, I saw no Otters rep at that NHL game, though. I'm just like, I don't know, that, I was I was like really looking for it, but I couldn't find any. Not even not even a jersey. Like, not even a not even an otter's jersey. At the game, I was like, and I was like, wait a minute, oh that fully, oh that's the, wait you you the owners of, wait owner of the otters with no jersey on. Wait a minute, you don't mess with them. Owner of the otters fake. All right, obviously some big words coming in from Wally right now. His team's down 2-0. Demoni, what do you think of the game so far? Uh, you know, the Otters, not outshooting them by much, but they're getting the better chances. Um, you know, getting past Gorius is definitely tough. He's one of the best defenders in the league. Uh, his delayed ping, being an EU player, really feeds into that. He's able to just ping it when you don't expect it. But, I mean, Robe and Sammy have really seemed to find a way past that. So, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he can not necessarily return to form, but find a higher form here in the second period. Obviously, he has been playing great. But, uh, his line mate, I forget who it is. 
Oh, uh, Radium 7. Radium 7. Not really giving him much help. He's been an alright 4 checker, but you'd like to see more offense from him if you're a Sacramento fan, that's for sure. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna, I think that Radium has probably looked to be the brightest spot uh, right now offensively really? for Sacramento. That's a fair assessment, I suppose. Here's Robe. Trying to get into the Sacramento zone. Gorius now. Nutmegging Robe. Gorius has Radium at center ice. Take he it whiffs back. on it. <laughs> Sammy the Whale able to defend that. Here's Robe getting past Gorius. Cutting to the middle. Robe's in. Saved by Al Fresco. He tried the short side. Sammy the Whale's out with it now at the blue line. Radium 7 defending against him. Tries to bring it down the ice. Well defended by Robe. Gorius gets past him. Sammy the Whale pinning him to the boards. It's up for Robe again. Robe past Radium. Goes around the net. Robe pulls it back. Looking for the shot, but it's denied by Al Fresco, I believe. He got the ping off. Robe. Back for Sammy the Whale. Sammy up the boards again for Robe. He'll cut to the middle this time. Well defended by Radium. Good read there. Radium keeping it in the zone. Finally cleared by Sammy the Whale. It's a foot race. Robe unable to win it as Gasoline swats it behind his own net. Robe still chasing. Packers on the ice now. Able to turn around and swat it back to Gasoline's. A-pad 8 changing. Gasoline's almost has time to shoot. But Packers denies it. Pressing up on him to defend the shot. Here's Gasoline's in the corner with it. Packers gets it free behind his own net. Looking for Apat. Passes directly to Arden B, who shoots and scores! Arden B gets the Sacramento Surge on the board as he buries one. It's one to two. You know, Packers, uh, he's been criticized a little bit this season. He's not the player that people thought he would be coming into things. And we were really hoping he would turn up during playoffs, kind of go back to form. But that was just uh, a, a bad play. No, no real way to sugarcoat that. Just a bad pass right out into the middle to Arden B, basically. Um, I'm sure he definitely didn't intend for it to end up there, but that's where it did. And Arden B is going to take that opportunity and beautifully just cut straight into the middle right away, getting past Bagel Glaze. Only a one nothing game now. Kind of concerning if you're Ohio, but I don't know. I think Robe might, he might be able to turn it up just a little bit more. Here's APAT 8. Wins the faceoff off Arden B. I do agree. That was a bad pass by Packers. He may redeem himself there as he stretches one up to Arden B, but... Or, sorry, Apat. <laughs> he did stretch <laughs> one well up to Arden B. Well defended by Arden yeah. B. Yeah, true. Packers carrying it back into his own zone. Carrying it past Arden B. Trying to force his way through both defenders. He'll get it into the surge zone. Gasolines is there. Packers trying the shot. Apat. Or, sorry, Al Fresco. Getting my names confused. Shows nothing in front. Here's Apat from the point. It's a weak shot. Doesn't make it to the net. Gasoline's up for Goriest. Who will change for Arden B. Radium 7 on the ice now. If the Surge are going to score, it's now. Here's Packers. Killing time behind his own net. Apat electing to change for Robe. Packers getting it free. Goriest hard pressure in the corner. Looking for the pass out. Here's Gorius trying to get it out to the slot. Nothing there as the uh, the post denied that one. Sammy the Whale on the ice for the Otters as Packer gets, gets a change. Gorius now. Still defending against Robe. He is not letting the Otters out from behind their own net. Robe finally gets it free. Has a two on one. Over for Sammy the Whale. His shot. Pang by Al Fresco. Great save. Sammy the Whale back out to Robe. Over for Whale. Whale back the other way. Radium 7 able to find it in the skates and clear it. Minute 30 left. Robe storming down the ice. Gorius gets it free. Radium 7 into the Otter's corner with it. Defended by Sammy the Whale. He'll ping it behind the net. Robe with possession now. Defended by Radium. Sorry, four checked by Radium. Robe down the near boards. Gasolines will 
take it from here into the corner, but Robe gets it free. Alafresco has to ping it out from the slot. Sammy the Whale up the boards. Robe looking to receive that pass. Arden B on the ice. Springs Gasolines, but Packers, good defense there. Able to get it away from Art, or sorry, Gasolines. Packers now. Behind his own net. Pressured by Arden B. Arden keeps it in. Packers and Arden will wrestle for it. Gets it free for Robe. Robe now. Getting past Gasolines. He's forced into the corner. Gasolines will take it from here, and Apat's on the ice for the Otters. As Robe will get a change. Packers is loose. Can't beat Gorius, though, off the bench. Gorius tries to get one up for Gasolines. Packers has a lane. It's denied by Gorius. He'll take it into the corner. Ten seconds left. Gorius can't free it. Looking to get it out from behind his own net. Packers will chase. Obviously not a terrible play with time winding down, but he won't get anything from it. Two to one as the Sacramento Surge get one on the board. And we could see a monumental comeback here. Luke, I'll pass it off to you. Yeah, Sacramento getting one on the board. Kind of surprising. Just a, a poor play by Packers. Uh, after that, Ohio kind of looked nervous in my opinion. They struggled behind the net for a little bit. Uh, you hope that they go into this intermission and kind of work things out. On the other end, if you're a Sacramento fan, uh, I just realized this is probably the most biased commentary booth of all time. So I'm going to try to change that. <laughs> if you're a Sacramento fan, whoever that is, um, then you just want them to keep applying the same pressure that they have. Uh, they, they obviously have made Ohio falter once and are holding them to two goals without Fresco in net. But uh, enough about the game. We're actually going to go into a new segment now for the first time. And that's a community spotlight. So recently we had a call to arms. We, we talked on uh, the BHCL Twitter about, hey, if you guys have anything cool you want to show on stream, like feel free to send it in. We would love to get it up there. So I'm just going to kind of go through a few things that uh, we, we, we got. Uh, so starting it off, I realized now that I should have prepared by trying to learn how to say names. But Mellow on Twitter drawing Ohio Otters. This is going to be all Otters, by the way. You can see also a black jersey version of that. Followed up by, oh no, I can't read the names. <laughs> also drawing Ohio Otters, this time cheering them on with a little sparkle and a little foam finger on the background. You can see that also enlarged. This one, a little penciled sketch by Jelly, I believe. Uh, this one's really cool because it has all of the players involved in it. This is the first Sammy the Whale fan art I have ever seen in my life, and I'm so happy about that. Not that it's the we not love that Sammy the whale. yeah exactly because I I love whale is, is what I'm trying to imply. Here's a little bit more detail on that one. Um, the Malibu Marshmallows actually did get one, um, and although Tony and Pal says that they're not a fan of how it turned out, I personally am Malibu Marshmallows manager here. Uh, this completely fits my vibe. It's a it's a very angry marshmallow on a stick but I would not want it any other way because that definitely defines my mentality for the entire season. Uh, and then how much time do we have left? 19 seconds? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. All right, we'll, we'll bring it back later on, but I have uh, one more thing, two, a few more things to show. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and bring it back to the mainstream. All right. Yes, sir. I'm excited to see this period get underway. Um, any predictions, Luke? Ooh, you know, I I really think that if Robe and Sammy the Whale, they get one more goal, uh, I think it'll put it out of reach for Sacramento. They're such a defensive team that it's, you know, their offense right now is kind of surprising. Uh, but mostly, I just think that the mentality just needs to go the way of Ohio if they want to secure the win. Yeah, Sacramento obviously scoring the goal that period, but they only had one shot with the Otters uh, having... I believe five. Here's Radium seven out to center ice. Robe intercepts that pass. It's out of play. As a uh, as the biggest Otters fan there is, I'm a little nervous. I think we should be winning by a larger margin, but obviously Alafresco. I may have been wrong. He's not playing bad. He's he's playing. He's honestly playing pretty well for someone who's uh who's just come out of retirement. As oh, and as I say that, Robe scores off the face-off. <laughs> it's three to one, Otters. Pulling up the replay right now to watch it back. 
Uh, and, and that's just, again, Al Fresco really can't be blamed for that one. He's getting double screened right there. Uh, Robe's just going to take advantage of the fact that he's playing against someone that's not the best on the faceoffs. Radium 7, not known to be, you know, that that star player that's going to win you all these faceoffs. Gorius looking like he's actually covering Sammy the Whale right there. And that leads to Robe just getting an easy walk-in goal. Robe, the captain for the Otters, putting up two for his team and basically assisting on the other one from Sammy the Whale. Three-point night for him already. The Otters uh, have Foolish to thank for that ghoul as he apparently predicted the face-off goal for Brobe. So good manifestation there from the Ohio, the Ohio Otters owner as it's now 3-1. to one. Robe pulling it back from the corner, trying to get his third of the night, but it's denied by Radium. Here's Sammy the Whale. Radium again holding the line, getting past Robe. Radium's shot off the post. It's a scramble, and it's in. Radium 7 pokes it home. And it's a one goal game again. The Sacramento Surge have two. You know, Radium 7, great player. I took him in second round in the draft for the Malibu Marshmallows. Ended up having to trade him for uh, reasons. But this is what you want to see from Radium. This is what you want to see from somebody that you traded two pretty decent players for in Mike Sinberto. I believe this is the first time that he's gotten on the score sheet for Sacramento. And this is a really necessary time to do it. Um, if I'm being honest, though, I think Sammy the Whale might have led to that play more than Radium. It, it kind of looks like, to me, either Sammy the Whale or Robe pings it back off the post. Uh, looks like Robe might have done that. Yeah, obviously not the play you want to see from the Otters, but both surge goals have been off poor mistakes. So I'm confident in the Otters' ability not to make those again. Here's Sammy the Whale in the corner. Sammy up for Robe. Robe defended well by Gorius. He'll pull it back in the in center ice. Looking for the shot. Won't get it. Here's Gorius stealing from Robe. Unable to get the shot away. Radium has it. Loses it. Robe a shot. He scores. Robe. A hat trick. And the Otters are up 4 to 2. Radium 7 obviously waiting to make that shot to get the perfect opportunity to slip it past Sammy the Whale and Robe, and Robe is going to completely deny that opportunity. A lot of the time, people there, they're going to sit there and crouch in front of it, waiting for you to take the shot. Robe going full offensive here. I don't, I definitely didn't expect that. Radium didn't expect that. Demoni, have we ever seen something like that before? Such an aggressive that was, play. That was wild. I honestly expected Radium to shoot that sooner. He kind of just stood there. He froze. I mean, I was going to compliment Radium's patient there because a lot of the times people do just shoot it right <laughs> off the bat. They don't give the defense time to make a mistake. Um, but <laughs> Robe doesn't play yeah, defense. But... <laughs> this is true. Robe, uh, not really a defensive-minded player. As you can see here, three goals for and two goals against, I believe. Or sorry, no, he, he has one goal against, but still a pretty bad one at that. Here's Packers, working his way into the surge zone. Defends Gasolines. Packers gets a shot away off the near post. Narrow miss for the surge as Al Afresco is forced to clear that one out. Here's Apat taking a shot now. Al makes the save again. Apat getting one up for Packers. He'll cross for Apat, smart play there. Apat looking for the shot. Al Fresco easily paddles that one away. Three minutes left for the search to score. As here's Apat trying to increase the goal differential for the Otters. Here's Packers now getting past Gasoline. His shot, he scores! Packers finds the far side. And it's 5-2. to two. The Otters are running away with this one. Uh, it's become open season out here for Ohio. Uh, really taking advantage of Al Fresco at this point. That's a save you think Chokington would have. Al Fresco just cheating a little bit too much on one of the posts. And Packers... Finally waking up and getting on the score sheet, getting in on the action. This is <laughs> what's needed if they want to make a deeper playoff run is Packers really needs to contribute more. So even though the game is starting to get out of hand, this is great for Ohio. Sacramento, on the other hand, they're not playing bad. If if Chokington was here, their starting goalie, it might be a lot closer than this. I mean, they're not playing bad, but obviously you, you have to look at the shot clock here. It's 17 to 6. Yeah, but that's the their whole just... game plan, though. Well, it's not working. I don't think it would work <laughs> if Chokington was in net. Here's Robe shooting one off the far post. 
almost has his fourth. Gorius taking it up the near boards. Robe able to collect that puck. The Surge's mental has to be in the basement right now. As here's Gorius defending against Robe. Looking for a shot. Gorius won't get it. Sammy the Whale able to come back and make the defensive play. Gorius shoots one out. I don't think Bagel was expecting that. He's still able to turn that one aside. Robe getting past Gorius. Two on one developing. Robe, he's in. Saved by Al Fresco, but he jumps over it. And Robe will tap it in for the easiest goal this game. Not much to say there. Uh, just a, just a, a, a poor misplay from Al Fresco. Um, lost the puck in his pads. Thought maybe the ref would blow the play dead, but he did not have possession of it. So Robe is just going to run up and tap it in. Again, Robe just playing pure offense, and it is working out against this insanely defensive team. The margin is getting bigger and bigger for the Otters. And it's looking more unlikely that the Surge come back into this one. Obviously, just... only four goals needed to force overtime. But it's pretty unlikely. You'd have to score one every 30 seconds almost. A little over that. Oh, Robe again shoots one off the post. Luke, uh, I believe you had some analysis. Oh, I was just going to say that I'm happy that uh, my Robe over 3.5 goals hit. <laughs> Here's Gorius. Towards the neutral zone. Gets around Sammy the Whale, but Whale finds it on the back check. Whale, 2 on one developing. Gasolines plays it well. Playing the man on that one. Here's Robe taking it, shooting it. And Al Fresco will have the ping. Puck is out to Sammy the Whale. Back for Robe. He'll take it to the boards. Robe trying the near side. Al Fresco shoulders that one away. Sammy the Whale at the slot. And Al Fresco able to make the glove before Sammy the Whale. As we mentioned before, the shot. called out the fans on Twitter, hashtag BHCL. If you have anything you'd like to share, any tweets, we're taking all of that into account. We're going to announce on our award ceremony who the best fan base is. I got to be honest, Ohio is running away with it right now. Oh, true. Ala Fresco, what a save off Packers. Off the faceoff, able to get the shot away. And that was destined for the near side, but Ala Fresco finds it with the glove. It's back for Packers. Easily blows by Gasolines, but he can't solve Arden B. Hits it to the middle. APAT almost able to get the shot off. Arden to the middle for Gasolines. That doesn't work. Packers has room. He'll go around. Finds the near side. And Packers has his second of the night. Seven to two Otters. That's a great goal from Packers. Just absolutely dangling past all of the surge and slipping it by Al Fresco. But I think that Packers might have awoken something even worse, is I believe I see the ghost of Chokington on the bench now for Sacramento. There's only a minute left in the game, but we might see the star oh goaltender my. get out of the hospital bed <laughs> and hop on the ice. It's gotten the, it's that kind of game. It's gotten to be that kind of game. And when I say the ghost of Chokington, I quite literally mean the ghost of Chokington. He is... <laughs> He is invisible on the bench. <laughs> yes, he's, he is here in spirit. Ah, uh, nice. Here's APAD off the face off, looking to finish out this final minute of the game. Packers up the near boards. Gets around Gasolines. Packers out of the corner, looking for the hat trick. Gasolines will deny it. APAD 8. Soft pressure on Gasolines. Up for APAT. Vasilevsky Skating. playing skater. <laughs> Times are rough in Sacramento, it appears. Times are tough. APAT defending against Vasilevsky. Takes it all the way in, but Vasilevsky able to find that one off the back check. Chokington working to the middle. Pulling it back. Looking for the pass to Goriest. Goriest looking to go back the other way. Packers will find that puck. Alafresco pings one out to Chokington. Vasilevsky back to Gorius. Gorius to Vasilevsky in the slot. APAT 8 is there to read the pass. Five seconds left. APAT looking for one final shot. Gorius won't let him get it. And the Ohio Otters have won game one of the BHCL playoff series against the Sacramento Surge. Obviously, this was the expected outcome. 
especially with Chokington, the surge of star goalie, missing. The Otters couldn't really find their footing in the first two periods, but seemed to come alive in the third. Yeah, I mean, this Any analysis, is, Luke? Although this is the expected outcome on paper, and maybe what Vegas would want you to believe, um, there's been a huge narrative going for a long time that Robe cannot perform in playoffs. So the fact that he just absolutely went off tonight is great if you're an Ohio Otters fan. Now, I, I gotta say, I want to give props to uh, Al Fresco. You know, the third period did not go the best. But the first two periods, they, they actually, he, he held them in there fairly tight, fairly well. Uh, you know, hopping off of retirement and making your start inside of a playoff game at the highest level is insanely difficult. But up until the very end, he played fairly well. Yeah, credit to Al Fresco. Uh, obviously had some beef on the desk beforehand. I think both sides are vindicated. Obviously, Al performing a lot better than expected, making the saves that he needed to make, but also, you know, letting some weak ones in. That's to be expected if you haven't played in a while. But much respect to Al Fresco for stepping in for a much-needed goaltending issue for the Surge. For, uh, before we send it off to break, do you want to hear a, uh, a quick, fun story about Al Fresco? Yes, the, uh... why not? <laughs> I, I knew that the Malibu Marshmallows, our season was over when we needed the surge to win against the LA Earthquakes. And I looked Wally. I shook this man in the hand, shook him in the hand. I looked him in the eye and I asked him, please beat the Earthquakes. And he responded with, don't worry, we just traded for Al Fresco. And that's when I knew that it was over and the surge released. <laughs> and that is a true story. <laughs> Al Fresco, uh, not the impact player you want <laughs> for a, a competing team. Um, you know, he held his own tonight, though, and we got to give him credit. Uh, anyways, we will be sending this one to break. We may have a desk segment in between, so stay tuned for that. The next game coming at you is the fourth seed Paris Pigeons versus the fifth seed LA Earthquakes. Stay tuned for that one. We'll be back shortly.
All right, BHCL, we're back for an in-between segment uh, in between these playoff games. Obviously, we just saw the Ohio Otters dominate the Sacramento Surge 7-2. to two. Fantastic game from the Otters. They lead the series 1-0. Um, game 2 between that series happening Friday, same time, 7 p.m. But let's transition into the next game uh, between the Earthquakes and the Pigeons. Uh, starting at 7.45, um, we had Yupi over there on my right side jump into uh, an analysis. Uh, we're going to send you over to that video right now. My name is Yupi. I'm a player on the New York Bagels BHCL team. Uh, you know, my team currently has a buy into the second round, so I have some time to spare. I'm going to be doing a little analysis for the, for the guys on the desk on the Los Angeles Earthquake and uh, their breakout style and their break-in style. Um, so we're going to get to see a quick little back check from Vacula Beef here. This is what you're going to see a lot of. He's the uh, primary four checker on this line. And Ghosty Ferret trusts him to do that dirty work for him and try to kind of bring the puck back to Ferret, which is what's going to happen. On this line, Ghosty Ferret is definitely the primary playmaker. So Vacula Beef is going to leave the puck for him a lot, you're going to notice. And even right here, you can see Vacula Beef trusts Ghosty Ferret. And this is definitely something Ghosty Ferret has instilled into him over the season. Um, he does not want Vac to come back and help him, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but he wants Vac to hold the attention of Woe Sniper and allow Ghosty Ferret to kind of isolate these 1v1s, which he will do here against Z01, as Z01's going to try to bring that puck in, but Ghosty Ferret's going to get a good stop. And now he's going to be able to push by Z01 and has all this space because of the presence that Vac Beef made. Now Ghosty Ferret's going to bring it up the ice, and you can even see some hesitation from Woe Sniper. He doesn't really know what to do. Because his teammate got burned by one of the best players in the league. And Ghosty Ferret's going to bring it in on a 2-on-1. You can even see Woe Sniper. He kind of inches towards Vac. He's not sure if Ferret's going to pass or not. And once Ferret notices this, it's already over. He's going to bring the puck in. Take a nice shot on the far side of PX4. And he's going to bury that. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot of this this series. As he's going to be matched up against our doggy And one of the weaker players on the Pigeons. Um, probably transports, who isn't bad by any means, but if you leave him in too many 2-on-1 situations, he's going to get punished, just like we saw Woe Sniper get punished here, um, just because of how dynamically this line is able to play because of the defense that Ghosty Ferret can play and how much back beef trusts him. Uh, but that's all the time I have for this segment. I'm going to hand it back to the guys, and uh, yeah, good luck to both teams tonight. I, uh, I'm really excited to see how this matchup turns out. All right. That is a great analysis from our pro and analyzer, Yupi, over there. Great talk about uh, the Los Angeles earthquakes. Um, so let's jump into things. We don't have much time. Let's start with Yupi. Obviously, he uh, analyzed the earthquakes over there. Do you do you have the earthquakes winning this one? Uh, I'm actually really confident in them. Uh, I've had a couple scrims with them recently, um, and you know they didn't go great. But I think they learn a lot every time they play. And I think the swapping out TJF, who's kind of you know at the end of his career. For somebody that's young, a lot more energetic, and has a lot more, like, much higher skill ceiling uh, than him, in Vac Beef is going to be uh, super impactful. I could see them running away with this in a 2-0 um, after Friday. I think if they win tonight, I'm not sure the Pigeons are going to be able to bounce back and, you know, learn from the uh, from the loss. And, you know, I think the Earthquakes can really run away with it. Um, and tonight, I think it's going to be uh, a pretty close game. I think it's going to be a 4-2 finish. All right, great pick there from Yupi. But Ohio Otters, what's your pick uh, for this game one matchup? Or not? You're muted, bud. He's nervous. Oh, oops. Yeah, no, sorry. I got cold feet there. Uh, you know, I love Vac Attack, Vacation Beach 24, whatever you want to call him. But um, I'm I'm not as confident in the Earthquakes. I think the Paris Pigeons... Have a great team, obviously some struggles mid-season. But uh, if anyone's going to turn that ship around, it's going to be Olav. He's a great leader. Great uh, move shifting him to the second line. He's been a lot more effective offensively for the Pigeons. So I, I have the Earthquakes taking this one tonight uh, by a score of maybe 3-1. to one. And uh, the series, I think it's going to go to three games, but I think the Pigeons will pull it out. Wow. Bold take there, even though it's a, it's a pretty wild uh, prediction there. We haven't had a series go to three games in quite the minute. We haven't had that if necessary game played. It's been like almost two seasons in the BHL, and uh, 
we might we might be making it three with the BHCL. Um, for this uh game, I'm going to take the Pigeons to win this one. I think the Pigeons are the better team here. I feel like uh Ferret and Nick, uh Konechny, last year when they were played in the playoffs, they really crumbled. I mean, Ferret played well, but I feel like they really crumbled and underperformed. Um, so I, I like the Pigeons winning this one. I'm going to go with 3-1 Pigeons uh, for tonight. And I think they're going to win the series 2-1. Uh, to one. I believe it is going to go to three games. But I think the Pigeons are going to pull it out. Uh, finally, uh, Vasilevsky, uh, making your way uh, out of the hospital for this one. Uh, how are you, how you feeling, first off? Hello? I mean, hello? Sorry? Ha- hello? Sorry? I'm uh, having some technical issues. Oh. <laughs> um so you know recovery was fine i had to shout for the last couple of minutes there f- to support my team um regardless um regardless entered the desk room the someone got so nervous that's, they laid that's that's, that's my son i'm sorry um you know can you re-ask the question? It's it's about the series, right? Yeah, Earthquakes, Pigeons. What do you got? You know what? I'm a big fan of Olaf. He's my little schnookums, my pookie bear, if you will. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him game one. All right, I'm gonna give the Otters game one. I'm gonna take it. Uh, I'm gonna give the Otters game one too. I'm not the Otters, whatever. The Pigeons, Pigeons. I'm gonna give him a two, two one, final regulation. And unfortunately, I'm going to say 2-1 Earthquakes as the overall finale. All right. Thank you for that, uh, Vasilevsky. Obviously, the medication still affecting you quite a bit. Uh, you're all over the place. But uh, we got to send you to break as uh, it is currently 745 at the moment. So we got to send you on a very quick break. We'll get you over to Paris in little, uh, no time. So uh, stay right here. All right, BHCL, we're back. Playoffs, game number one of the second first round series taking place between the LA Earthquakes and the Paris Pigeons. Currently, both the teams huddled up in their locker rooms at the moment. Um, We should be getting this started momentarily. Uh, We'll have probably our doggy and transports for the Pigeons, along with Olov and I believe uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., their second line with Pluds starting in net for Paris. And on the Earthquake side of things, the visiting team should be Ghosty Ferret and Vaculate Beef 24 on the first line with Connect Me and Quake TFA on the second line. And starting in net for your Earthquakes is Nixie's 12. Faceoff commencing in around 17 seconds. So we got a bit of time before this game gets underway. But very first impressions of a playoff series, 
We'll see how these teams perform under the pressure. Obviously a 10K prize pool at the end of everything. So high stakes, high pressure as we're underway in Paris. Ardoggy winning the faceoff versus Vaculate Beef, and he'll take it into the zone. Ghosty Ferret gets it out instantly, transports. Takes his time, hitting it up for Ardoggy, but intercepted by Ghosty Ferret. Ardoggy able to force it by Ghosty Ferret momentarily, and he's able to keep it in the zone. Ardoggy to the middle, saved by Nixies. Ghosty Ferret behind the net. Pulled back by Ardoggy, but he's unable to get a shot away. It goes wide. Ferret working the puck along the boards and out of the zone. In neutral ice now, transports. Trying to get it to the middle for Ardoggy. He whiffs on the original shot attempt, and Ghosty Ferret clears. Ghosty Ferret across for Vacuum Beef. He's over the open shot. Saved by Pluds. Big save from the Paris goaltender with a quick start to this one. The puck worked along the near boards by the penalty boxes as Transports enters the zone. Ghosty Ferret instantly clears it, though. Trying to work past Ardoggy, but he's unable to. Ardoggy moving corners. And able to move the puck out of the zone. Trying to get past Vaculate Beef, but a good poke there from uh, Vac. Ferret trying to work it into the middle, but it's cleared away. And down the ice by Transports. Ferret taking his time, cutting to the middle. He switches with Vaculate Beef, but Ardoggy reads it and hits it to the boards. Now he hits it back to his teammate Transports. Crossing to Ardoggy. Both these teams taking a very long line change. Should see them get off the ice soon. A very long shift, I should specify, as Ardoggy back checks Ghosty Ferret there. Ardoggy gets it past Vaculate Beef, trying to get to the middle, but he's unable to. Ghosty Ferret forces him to the boards. A lot of back and forth action. Ardoggy is shot, it goes wide. His patented P2 out of the corner to a P3 on display there. But he was missed the target. Ghosty Ferret behind his own net. Olov now on the ice for the Pigeons. It'll be Tiger Lover on the second line. With Olov. And it's Konechny. And it'll eventually be Quake TFA when Ghosty Ferret goes for the change. Pluds plays it out. Olov has a break. Quake TFA late to get on. But a big ping by Quake. Able to recover. Olov keeps it in the zone though. Taking it out. Cuts back. Both players bunching heavily there, but the Paris Pigeons are unable to take advantage of it. Konechny gets past Tiger Lover to the middle for Quake. Quake all alone with shot saved by Pluds. The rebound clears by Olov. Konechny hits it to the middle. It's hit away by Tiger Lover. Tiger Lover trying to work it down the boards. A big hit there from Konechny. No call from the referee. He keeps his whistle in his pocket. Playoff hockey, as they say. Not going to call as many penalties and be more lenient towards very touchy calls as Konechny trying to work down the ice, but it's hit away by the Pigeons. Tiger Lover hits it up the boards. Gives it off to Olov, but Quake TFA right there. Tiger Lover with a good shift. A shot saved by Nixies. Both goaltenders getting quite a few tests early on, but nothing major. Haven't had to see any great aim and glove saves so far as Ardoggy back on the ice for the Pigeons, and he's forechecking crazily. Takes it away from Quake TFA in the corner. Ghosty Ferret back on for the Earthquakes. They are matching these two superstars head to head as Ardoggy trying to work it out of the zone, but Ferret steals it from him, clears. Nice curve by Ferret, but it ends up out of play. It was a two-on-one for the Earthquakes heading the other way, and instead it's an offensive zone draw. Really unfortunate for Ghosty Ferret. Uh, he had our doggy, the best player on the Pigeons, absolutely beat, and then just threw away his opportunity. Faceoff getting underway. Our doggy wins it, tries to shoot it off the faceoff, but it's cleared by the Earthquake. Ghosty Ferret hitting it back in, into his own end, behind his net, net but Ardoggy steals. Ardoggy to the middle. Transport's very nervous to step up on that one, but he had a chance. He was unable to get the shot away, though. Ardoggy hitting it to the middle for Transport's. He pings this one, but 
Not able to get a shot away as Ghosty Ferret hits it aside. 27 seconds remain in this first period. Ghosty Ferret trying to work past transports, but he's unable to. He pulls it back, though, given a lot of space. Gets by R Doggy momentarily, but R Doggy able to back check and recover. Pigeons might decide to just kill this one, as there's only a couple seconds left in the period. That's exactly what R Doggy's doing, keeping it in behind his own net. And that'll do it for the period. A very playoff-like period. Not a lot of shots, not a lot of goals. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, really low-scoring game. Or uh, It seems like it's it's such a low shots-on-goal game, but it feels like there's been so many more opportunities than just two each. Uh, Ghosty Ferret and R Doggy, I know, both getting quite a few good looks. R Doggy with his patented P3 from that corner, but this time it just goes a little bit wide. Uh, this, this this is obviously the excuse me I'm, I'm losing my train of thought this is obviously the game that has the closest teams in terms of skill right like it could go either way between the earthquake and the pigeons but I mean it is showing that right now as there is no team that has looked like a clear winner to me that period they both probably had equally the same amount of mistakes and the same amount of opportunities yeah, it was an interesting period for sure. Obviously, you would like to see a little more uh, finishing ability from both teams. As you mentioned, it felt like there was a little more chances than just two aside. Um, but, you know, our doggy had that P3 from the boards that went wide. There was a couple chances that just barely missed the net or um, at the last moment were hit away by a defender. Um, it's kind of what you expect to see from you know, playoff hockey, you know, teams are playing to the best of their ability and they're playing as conservative as possible because they don't want to concede that one goal or make that one mistake that'll cost them the game or the series, that being. Yeah, and I mean, in general, though, the Paris Pigeons are a more defensive team than offensive. Their only real goal scorer is our doggy and Olav whenever he decides to step up to the ice or to the plate. Um, on the other hand, you have... To basically the opposite in, in L.A., almost pure offense. Uh, Ghosty Ferret is their best two-way player. Besides that, you have Nick, who isn't known to be great on defense, and Quake, who's Quake TFA. Um, so it, it, this is really such an interesting matchup. Uh, like, these teams, it really just depends on how they play any given day. There is... There's really no way to predict who the, the winner is going to be in this game. Uh, that being said, I do think that Ghosty Ferret might just edge it out a little bit over the Paris Pigeons. I, I think he's just a little bit more of a complete player. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I feel like the Earthquakes had the better first period out of the two teams. The two shots that we saw from the Earthquake were very dangerous opportunities and very great saves by the goaltender Plods. Um, whereas I feel like the Pigeons didn't really have that scoring oomph that we saw from the Earthquakes. But we're going to resume action in the second period. Faceoff taking place in five seconds. No changes to each team's lines. They're running the same thing as Vacuate Beef wins a faceoff. Almost gets past Transports instantly, but Transports hits it to the corner. Little help from Pluds there in the net as well as he got a piece of that. Vacuate Beef. Working on transports in the corner. Out to Ghosty for a shot. Saved by Pluds. It was behind him. May have hit the post and he gloved it. Ghosty Fair working it back into the zone. But he backs off and lets Ardoggy take over. Ardoggy hitting it just a bit too far and Ghosty Ferret will take over. A little bit of a stutter there from Ardoggy. Something to keep an eye on as Ghosty Ferret and Ardoggy go at it along the boards. Puck is in the pigeon zone. Ghosty Ferret double cover now. A shot on their own net from the Pigeons. It's stopped by Pluds. Not a great start for the period for Paris. As Ghosty Ferret appearing to be the better of the two superstars so far. Ghosty Ferret takes it away from transports behind the net. Now he's crossing it for Vacula Beef. Vacula Beef has plenty of space here. Trying to work past Ardoggy, but a good block there. Ardoggy a shot saved by Nixies. Ghosty Ferret clearing the zone. Transports pulls it back. Looking for Ardoggy. He didn't realize where the puck was. And Ghosty Ferret pounces. Vacula Beef now. Back in his own end. He crosses for Ghosty Ferret. 
One-on-one -on -one versus Transports, but Transports wins it and pulls it all the way back. Kind of a pass there, like a drop pass. Transports trying to pass it up for Ardoggy, but it's intercepted by Ghosty Ferret. Ghosty Ferret hit away by Olav. Olav trying to work around the outside, but Ghosty Ferret with a good back check there. And he pulls it away from Olav. A lot of space for Ghosty Ferret here. Gets past Olav. He's in alone. Shot saved by Pluds. Olav crossing it for Tiger Lover. Trying to catch the Earthquakes sleeping on a line change, but Quake gets there in time. Quake trying to work past Tiger Lover now, but it hits it to the border. Nice pullback from Quake. He keeps it in the zone. A shot saved by Pluds. Earthquakes having a much, much better period. Feels like they've been dominant on the attack here as Tiger Lover trying to work out of the corner. He whiffs yet again, and Quake keeps it in. Quake doing a fantastic job on this forecheck, trying to get it out for Konechny at the point, but pass was too weak, and it's taken over by Olov. Olov works back into his own end now. Clears the zone, but Quake takes over. Puck in neutral ice as Olov hits it back for Tiger Lover. Tiger Lover hits it up for Olov, who hits it up the boards. Konechny. Able to clear the zone, but a good block from Tiger Lover. But Quake TFA takes it away from him. Olov. Tries to work it up. The near boards, he is able to. And he, it's behind the net. Quake. Working on Olov. Big hit there. Again, the ref keeping his whistle silent. Our doggy now back on the ice against this second line. A shot! It goes off the side of the post. And finally, a penalty called on the earthquake says our doggy hit behind the net there. And Quake TFA will be heading to the box. We'll be saying a power play for the first time in BHCL. Congrats, Quake TFA. You are the first penalty taker. Well, Paris Pigeons are no <laughs> are known to go on the power play, so we'll see how this turns out. They have a lot of practice here. Ardoggy almost gets a shot away on the faceoff, but Ghosty Fair hits it away. Ardoggy pulls it back past Ghosty Fair to shot saved by Nixies. Rebound, he gloves it. Big save on the rebound as Ardoggy may have had a rebound opportunity out in front. Our doggy just basically 1v1ing uh, Pluds, it felt like, for the entire sequence. Uh, Ghosty Fair got a stick on it early on after the faceoff, but besides that, it was all our doggy and uh, Nixies. My bad. Yeah. Wrong goaltender, but it happens. Our doggy wins the faceoff again, but Ghosty Fair pings it away. He works past Transports. He's in shorthanded, but Transports able to back check it. Almost an opportunity the other way as Transports struggling with it. Hits it up for our doggy. That's an easy play from Ghosty Fair to make. He keeps it on the boards and a fantastic penalty kill for the Earthquakes besides that first opportunity. Our doggy. Nice pullback there, but Ghosty Ferret hits it away. Transport's now given space and he just hits it right to Ghosty Ferret. Transport's making quite a few miscues here in this second period. I believe he was also the person to shoot it on his own goal as our doggy is shot saved by Nixies. He's been strong as well. Both goaltenders not looking to give up that first goal. Ghosty Ferret given plenty of space and time. He looked for the pass originally, but looks off Konechny as Olov and Transport's on the ice for the Pigeons. Ghosty Ferret pulls it back, trying to work it to the middle, but it's hit away by Olov. Big ping by Konechny. Ghosty Ferret tries to get to the middle, but unable to. Olov hitting it back. Into his own end. Crossing it for Tiger Lover. Tiger Lover. Chance with three seconds left, but it's hit away by Konechny from behind. And that'll do it for the second period. It's still 0-0 after two. Both goalies putting on a show here in Paris. It's only a matter of time before one of these goalies falter. Uh, we see, we've seen this time and time again. Goalies absolutely going crazy. Insanely dominant the entire game. And then letting in the weakest shots that you just expect them to save. Uh, I'm kind of expecting that's how this game's going to go. Maybe one nothing, maybe uh, 
2-1 type game. I, I don't see a lot of goals being scored, but I think that the goal that is going to be scored is just going to be, it's going to be soft. It's going to be weak. You're not going to expect that to be the game winning goal in such an action packed, high octane, high, just offense game. Uh, real fast though, want to talk about some of the players on the Paris Pigeons. Transport's not looking the best, being a little shaky, making some questionable plays, just looking like he's maybe being a little bit too cautious in some areas and too reckless in others. Kind of hard to explain, but uh, just not looking like he's pairing out with our doggy the best right now. And as far as the second line goes, Olaf has not looked much better, which is kind of surprising considering he has played the majority of this season on the first line. You would think that with all of that uh, experience going down on the second line against what should be worse players, he would absolutely dominate them. Uh, that's not his game style, so it's not a huge shock, but you'd really hope to see something more from one of your star players. Uh, thankfully, they have Plud's backing them in net, who's played very well so far. Same with Nixies. Both of them standing on their heads, keeping their teams in the game, because even though the shots are only 5-6 to six right now, it, they've, they've been decent shots, and there have been a few that have gone off the posts, and own goal shots do not count either, so that's another save for Plud's that he was definitely not expecting. Yeah, I, I wonder if the Pigeons go to Marvin Harrison Jr. We saw him a little bit during the BHCL um, regular season, they just don't have the offensive firepower to compete with this Earthquakes team at the moment. And maybe mixing it up with a forward who is capable of scoring on that second line and, you know, is pretty active every every day. I, I, I see Marvin Harrison Jr. on the server quite a bit scrimming and trying to get better at it, at his craft. Maybe Maybe some usage of him in this third period, maybe mix things up. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. I think that Marvin Harrison Jr. and uh, Olaf for the second line might be a little bit more powerful. Uh, it's kind of a high risk, high reward situation as he just he he has so much potential but doesn't have the experience to back it up. But you know, it's it's playoffs hockey. You have to take these risks if you want to win. You're not going to win. The Paris Pigeons are not going to win by playing it safe. They're not going to win the cup by playing how they've played the entire season. Um, it has been the narrative that they are kind of frauds. They don't necessarily deserve to be the position they are. And they're kind of showing it tonight. Um, although these seeds are close, they're not winning. All right. Face-off underway as Ardoggy won it. Puck it sits in neutral ice a moment before heading into the earthquake zone. Ardoggy doing a good job on the forecheck. Nice pullback there. Gets some space away from Ghosty Ferret. He tries a very sharp angle shot, but it goes haywire behind the net. Our doggy doing a fantastic job on the forecheck here. Looks like a much better shift for the Pigeons to start, but Ghosty Ferret working past transports. Ghosty Ferret trying to get a shot away, but I believe the Pigeons got a stick on that. Sending it wide. As Transport's trying to work up, but a good block from Vaculate Beef. Our doggy to the middle for Transports, but Ghosty Ferret reads that well. And works past transports. Trying to cut to the middle, but it's hit away by R Doggy. R Doggy. Trying to work past Ghosty Ferret, but he's unable to. Vacuum Beef taking over, and the puck ends up out of play on the Pigeons bench. You think you know who's gonna win this upcoming BHCL playoffs? Go ahead and tweet us, Blocky Hockey MC on Twitter or X. We have our playoff bracket. Go ahead and say who you think's gonna win. Challenge, challenge there. Use the hashtag BHCL as well, so we can see your bracket. As Vacuum Beef almost has a shot on net there, pinging it away from Transports, but Plud's coming out of the net, hit it away. Transports for a funky, tries to get a shot away, but Ghosty Ferret getting a stick on that, sending it wide, and he takes it away from our doggy. Two on one for the earthquake. Ghosty Ferret in the zone, save Plud's. He plays it. Ardoggy working it along the bench. Vacula Beef takes over. Back trying to work it along the boards, but unable to, and the puck ends up out of play. A great sequence from both teams right there. Uh, Ghosty Fair coming out on top among all of the players, though. Getting a huge opportunity against Pluds. Pluds kind of sitting in the middle. He's surprised that Ghosty Fair didn't try to cheat off the post with that shot. But it looks like Tiger level Lover will be out for the third period. Olav almost generating a shot chance on the faceoff. He had a plenty of net to look at, but he missed by quite a bit as Konechny working it up the ice, but Olav gets back on the back check. He is normally a defenseman, but 
He's been playing forward at the latter half of this season as Olov trying to work past the Earthquakes. I'm not sure who got a stick on it, but it was one of them. It might have been Quake or Konechny as Konechny takes over. Trying to clear the zone, but he's unable to. Olov keeps it in. Olov trying to pass it to the middle, but unable to as Tiger Lover passing it up for Olov. A shot saved by Nixies. Oh, my. Idiot. It's in. What? Uh... I think I. it's possible that it might have gotten stuck in the netting, or he dropped it in the net. I'm, I'm trying to pull up the replay for that right now. Uh, hey, can you guys tell me if that was a uh, goal or not? <laughs> I don't uh, think it was. Okay, so from what I can see, I'll, I'll, I'll try to pause it, and I'll, I'll try to like zoom in. Hold on. On the stream. Okay. From what I can see, Nixie's gloves it. He turns around to play the puck. He yeah, plays cool. it inside of the glass, and then Quake hits it, uh, thinking it's going to like bounce off the glass, and instead it goes into the net. Like, the puck kind of was inside huh. of the netting as Nixie's put it down. Yeah, so one of the one of the rules that was newly added to the rule book is if there is a game breaking bug, I'm pretty sure, uh that it leads to a goal, um the referee can determine that it is a game breaking bug and call it back. Um but it should be no goal, I'm pretty sure as the puck was Yeah, this is no goal. Yeah, the puck was dropped at the side of the net and hit in by Quake. Uh, obviously a bug. It will still be an offensive zone face-off, though, for the Pigeons, as the you know the puck was in the offensive zone. Oh wait, you said oh, off offside dot? Ooh, maybe not. Definitely a, a weird uh, sequence. I don't know why it would be the offside dot, but I trust Yuppie's word. Yeah, it should be ozone. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, oh, blow it dead. Oh, blow it dead, blow it dead, blow it dead. All right. <laughs> All right. Just figuring some things out. It should be in the offensive zone there. As Nixies did glove it down, it just pretend like he didn't play the puck, and it's an offensive zone instead. As Olov trying to shoot it off the faceoff, and it's hit to the boards by Quake. Quake hitting it up for Konechny. Konechny trying to get past Tiger Lover, but it's pinged away. In the, board, in the corner now. Tiger Lover versus Konechny. Both battling it out here for possession. No player really taking huge possession of this puck. Finally, Nick Konechny trying to take possession of it in neutral ice, but he's whiffing quite a bit. Quake takes over as Tiger Lover hits it right back up. Olov trying to get a shot away from the near boards, but it's hit to the boards by Konechny. Tiger Lover trying to hit it to the center, but no one home as Quake TFA takes it back into his own end. Quake... Works past Olov momentarily, but Olov able to back check and hit it behind the net. Olov fighting for the puck with Quake. It ends up on the stick of Konechny, but both teams deciding to line change here. First, almost in the entirety of the first line is back on the ice. As Ardoggy looking for transports, it's pinged away by Ghosty Ferret. Quake will finally head to the bench. Transports in front, it's stopped by Nixies. Ardoggy a shot from deep. It goes wide. Ferret will take over. Very, very close game here as Ghosty Ferret backs off as Transport takes over. A shot from Ardoggy from deep. It hits the post. Ghosty Ferret behind his net. Looking for that game-winning goal at this point. Any goal from any team at this point is a crusher. And pretty much a guaranteed game-winning goal as Ardoggy hits it away from Ghosty Ferret. Transports behind the net. Hits it up for Ardoggy. Both players whiffing in the neutral zone as one minute remains in the third period. Transports wins it! A shot off the post! Cleared away by Nixies and Vacula Beef now behind his net. Hitting it up for Ghosty Ferret. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Transports, but Transports pitches it away. Ghosty Ferret taking it back into his own hands. It's Ardoggy and Olov, the line we saw at the beginning of the season. Ardoggy trying to take it out of the corner, but he unable to as Ghosty Ferret takes over. Two on one potentially here for the Earthquake. Ghosty Ferret down the boards. It's hit away by Ardoggy. Ardoggy 
Hitting it up the boards, but Vacuo Beef right back in. He's in alone. Has a shot opportunity saved by Plaudes. The rebound. It's cleared away. Olov works it past Ghosty Fair. A shot off the post. Ghosty Fair to the middle. Tries to get past Olov. One last chance for the earthquake. It's hit to the boards by Olov. Behind the net now, and that will do it. We will be seeing overtime in game one of this series. Insane last sequence of events as constant shots going off the post on both ends. Olov probably with the best opportunity in the last 15 seconds of play right after his goaltender Pluds makes a save there. Just insane performance here by the players, by the goalies. Some of the best blocky hockey we've seen in a while. And it's doesn't end now because we're heading into overtime. Damoni, what are your thoughts on the game so far? Ooh, definitely a close one. Uh, I'd say the Pigeons, you know, obviously having the edge on the shot clock. But uh, if you look at the game, the Earthquakes really aren't playing that bad. Obviously, our doggy dominating possession-wise. But it's just a, a very, very tight game. And either team could come away with this. Uh, despite the score being 0-0, a very entertaining match so far. I am still going with my prediction of the game-winning goal will be a soft goal. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I disagree. I think it's it's going to be Olav from deep. Fair enough. So a softie. In. So a softy. No, it's, it's well, it's going to be a Olaf rocket. Deep. It's, it's, it's going to be, yeah, be a rocket. rocket. Alfresco, what are your thoughts? Who do you think is going to take it home? Who do you think is going to score the goal? How is it going to be scored? Give us all of the juicy detail. Uh, dude, I have to go with Paris still. I took him on the desk. I got to back up my claim. I feel like um, they've had some of the better ch looks in this game. Uh, Plutz has looked fantastic position positionally and has pretty much read everything the Earthquakes have thrown at him. Um, Nixies has been quite out of position sometimes, been sleeping, and has had slid, have to have had to slid just at the last second in order to make a save. So I feel like they're going to be caught sleeping. I'm going to go with our doggy overtime winner. I think he's going to get a nasty pullback on Ghosty Ferret, make him look silly, and finish it um, in the corner of the net. Fair enough. Very... Very in-depth play, uh, if that comes true. I, I don't know. I feel like you deserve something for that. But <laughs> only a couple of seconds now before we head out to the face-off in our first overtime in BHCL playoff history. A little bit of talk between the second liners here, between Tiger Lover and Quake TFA getting into it um, in between this intermission. Nope, he said JK. It's okay. Yep, all jokes all jokes here. As faceoff gets underway for overtime and our doggy wins it. Works past Ghosty for a shot, it goes through the crease and wide. Transports. Tries the same side pass for our doggy. He gets past the shot, goes wide. Two early chances for our doggy, but both missing the net in overtime. Ghosty Ferret, pinged away by our doggy from behind. Transports, passing it up for our doggy, but hit away. Our doggy, trying to P3 it, but it's read well by Ghosty Ferret. Two on one the other way for Vacuate Beef. A shot. Vacuate Beef ends it in overtime as the Earthquakes take game one. You know, back playing. A little bit questionable, as TJF101 has been on the bench this entire time. Going into the season, Vac was riding the bench, but he has shown why he deserves to be there. Uh, the whistle was blown, though. Not sure if there's any sort of... I think it's a good goal, but just... Challenge. Just just to, to check, I'm oh, going we, to uh, check. We invested... <laughs> uh, review... I don't uh, believe Plods was in Butterfly. 
Why would uh, it also it came out very uh, it, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, for, that, for that to be no goal, it has to be at the corner. Yeah. So that should be a good goal. The Earthquakes are going to win game one off no. of a, a breakaway from Vac. Luke, go ahead. Finish your statement. Right before the Earthquakes scored, there was actually an Earthquake within the arena, kind of giving them a little bit of an advantage there as the camera got a little messed up. Uh, Goofy Fair <laughs> just stomping down the ice kind of has an impact on things. <laughs> But Vacuolate Beef, like I said, ending it in overtime in his first playoff appearance. Uh, and TJF probably solidifying his spot on the bench for the rest of playoffs. Yeah, I mean, Vac had a great game today. And sealing it with a game-winning goal, uh, I don't think they'll be benching him anytime soon. Uh, a fantastic start for the Earthquakes. As, we mentioned, as I mentioned on the desk, we haven't seen a series go to three in quite a moment in BHL. So winning that first game is so, so crucial for e any team in a series because usually they take that momentum into game two. But obviously game two is not right now. It's going to be on Friday. Both round one matchups have a game two on Friday, starting off with the, with the Ohio Otters visiting the Sacramento Surge at 7 p.m. Friday, March 22nd. And... Um, after that, um, you will see these two teams go head-to-head -head again, but in L.A., Paris Pigeons visiting the L.A. Earthquakes. Um, tentative start to that is 7.45, but as you can see, some of these games can get a little bit longer due to overtime, so that might have to be pushed back. But for now, I believe that's all we have. Uh, Luke, just double-checking, that's it for the production side of things? That should be all we have tonight. Uh, we will be back on Friday. Yippee. All right. Thank you all for tuning in to the stream. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks a lot to uh, Luke uh, behind uh, the camera, uh, Ohio Otters for commentating the first game, uh, Yupi and Vasilevsky being on the desk in, the, in between games, um, and obviously uh, Ghosty Fair and ZD being on the desk in the for the first game. Um, we thank you all for tuning in. We will see you Friday for game two. So mark it on your calendars. But for now, we say good night.